And I am now recording. Welcome to the Green Bay Phoenix Coaches Show presented by Prevea Health, the official health care provider of the Green Bay Phoenix. I'm Brian Kuklinski, joined by the head coach of the Phoenix basketball team, Ryan. Coach, it's been a little bit since we got to chat, and I'm sure a whirlwind of a summer moving your family to Wisconsin and getting everything ready to go. So first question out of the bat, how is the family, everybody healthy, everybody making a good adjustment to Wisconsin? Everybody's great. Everybody is healthy. Um, my boys are virtual learning. So my wife is um, kind of their substitute teacher. She's, she's their helper. She's got to bounce around from desk to desk. Um, with I have three sons, so sixth grade, fifth grade, and kindergarten. So she's all over the chart in terms of, you know, what helping with reading, helping with math, helping with spelling, you know, ABCs and all that with my young guy. But no, everybody's healthy. Everybody's adapting well. Uh, you know, it is it is a little tough on everyone in, in terms of, you know, you're, you're back in the home state, but you still can't visit and go out and see all your family and friends, you know, in a normal year where you'd like to. You know, I would have probably already made a couple trips down to Madison to see my folks. Right. And siblings and nieces. So, you know, that's, that's a little rough, but you know, with social media and FaceTime and all that good stuff, you know, you, you're always kind of in constant contact. So what you're saying is since you've gotten a job, your wife has been busier than you have. Yes. <laughs> and that is, that is a full-time job with, with my three rugrats, but she's, uh, no, she's a, she's a, she's a saint and you know, it's going to get a little rougher probably as, as the weather gets a little bit colder, but we're going to kick the boys outside and make, they can go build snowmen and play, play tackle football outside or something. We're talking with Green Bay Phoenix head coach, Will Ryan. So coach, you, you get the job and then you've got to put a coaching staff together. And we haven't had a chance since you, uh, you put the staff together. And I had a chance to come over and watch practice last week. And uh, your assistant coaches are really, you know, they're out there getting after it, pretty high energy guys. Uh, tell me about the process of putting your staff together. So first and foremost, you know, I wanted to surround myself with, with guys that, you know, that I know and trust. And, but at the same time, they have to be teachers because that's what we do. You know, as basketball coaches, you're, you're a teacher, you're teaching the game and especially, especially taking over a program that, you know, it was a little more up and down and the style of play is, is different. You know, I wanted, I wanted to have um, teachers surrounding me. So we all, you know, we're not, they're not all yes men as they say, but you know, they're guys that kind of share the same vision and um, you know, are an extension of me, so to speak, but they've all played at a high level. Uh, Jared Swanson and uh, Brandon Pritzel are two guys that I've worked with before. Coach Swanson was with us at North Dakota State and at Ohio University. And uh, so we've known each other for eight out of the last 10 years, something like that. And or worked on the same staff eight out of the last 10. Uh, and then Coach Pritzel, who's from right down the road in De Pere, is, you know, a lot of people around here are familiar with him and his family. He was a graduate assistant for us at Ohio University and, you know, just, him being, you know, a little bit younger than us, the rest of the staff, he relates well to the, to the guys and is also an excellent teacher and just has a, has a good pulse, good feel for, you know, the kids nowadays, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a spring chicken anymore, so to speak, <laughs> but, uh, you know, being 42, you know, I, I still try to, I still try to keep it loose with the guys and stay up to date on, their likes and dislikes, but, but coach Pritzel being in his upper twenties, you know, he's got a good feel for, for all that stuff. And, and he relates well to the guys. And then uh, coach Freddie Owens is another guy who um, a lot of Wisconsinites know played for my dad at Wisconsin and is from Milwaukee. He has never really coached in the Midwest. He's kind of been on the West coast and East coast for the last, about 14 years. So I plucked him away from uh, Loyola, Maryland. And, you know, he, he jumped at the opportunity to come back, be closer to home, 
uh, you know, he's like a couple hours from his father down in Milwaukee and, uh, you know, he's, he's got great energy and, you know, he's learned from a couple, you know, really good coaches, you know, he coached with, um, uh, coach Carmody who coached at Northwestern and a Holy cross. So he knows some of the Princeton stuff, um, as well as, um, coach Craig Robinson, who's now the, the head of the NABC, the president of the NABC he coached with him out at Oregon state. Uh, he's got a Princeton background as well. So, you know, like I said, excellent teachers of the game. And, uh, you know, they, they relate well to the kids. And I think the guys, the guys sense that positivity. And uh, I think they enjoy being around them. You know, when I was at practice last week, it was the first time in, in quite a while I've seen the team. You devoted almost a majority of that practice to defense. And, you know, obviously the offense is getting to work on some stuff, but it was really a defensive centric practice. How much since you guys have started practice has the focus been on that defensive side of the ball? Uh, you know, there's no question that, you know, we want to try to hang our hat on the defensive end and, um, you know, have that, that, that workman like blue collar uh, mindset and get after it defensively. Uh, we spend, I don't know, we probably go maybe 50, 50, Maybe okay. 640 defense offense right now. Uh, you know, we don't we don't try to mix up our coverages too much. I mean, it's all pretty simple. We, we try to keep the game as simple as possible for the guys. So, you know, five guys playing as one is is what we try to preach. And you can't have four guys on the same page and one guy off because there's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be glaring and you're gonna make mistakes. So you're always constantly being ready to help help your your teammate you know if you get beat off the dribble we got help there you know or if you there's a miscommunication you know we got help and that's that's what we're trying to stress to the guys you know you you can't you're not gonna you're gonna play a perfect game or pitch a perfect game but you know you you can you can have some perfect possessions defensively you know are the guys buying in pretty well on the defensive side because for some of the returning players it, it's a little bit of an adjustment to have that focus on the defensive end. No, they, they really are. They, they've adapted well. And, you know, with, with having, you know, guys like PJ and, and Amari and, you know, Josh was sitting out last year, Japan was sitting out last year, you know, those guys have bought in really, really well. And, you know, you got, I don't know, we have eight or nine freshmen, so we got some, we got a couple seasoned vets, but we also have a lot of young guys. So just trying to get everybody on the same page and, uh, you know, just make sure that they know they can't take possessions off. You know, you can't, can't be out to lunch on one possession and, you know, cause other good, good teams are going to make you pay. So, you know, just repetition, a lot of repetition, repping it out, ball screen defense. Uh, you know, we watch a lot of film and we show the guys where they're, where they can be better, being in the right spots. Um, so yeah, they're they're buying in and they're doing a good job. You mentioned the returning players like uh, you know Amari, PJ, and a few others, but you also mentioned the new guys coming in. And I want to touch on the roster uh, when we come back. We're listening to the Green Bay Phoenix Basketball Coaches Show presented by Purveya from Learfield IMG College. Wow, you filled eight minutes pretty quick there. Oh, I, I talk too much, probably. Uh-uh. More of you, less of me always makes for a better. <laughs> That's funny because our radio guy at uh, Ohio told Saul Phillips after the first coaches show, he goes, yep. it was a Saul Phillips, Phillips coaches show, and he said, wow, you bring such, such great material to my show. <laughs> <laughs> Saul, Saul was like, what? It's all just rolled with it, you know. You know, I know you've gotten to be around him quite a bit. I'm very much, obviously, this is just a side gig for me, but I'm very much a student of Matt LaPay. And, you know, when Matt does a game, it's Matt show. Yeah. But when Matt is interviewing Greg or when Matt is interviewing Paul or when he was interviewing your dad, Matt does such a phenomenal job of just shutting up, getting out of the way. Yeah. And, because they don't care what I have to say. 
what you know i'm just the idiot with a microphone hey, that actually has to do it don't sell yourself short right <laughs> uh, th this one i want to do just a couple quick minutes on uh putting the roster together mm -hmm. um and then we'll do a quick little preview of the season um we'll talk about the horizon league scheduling and any challenges with the back-to-back -back dates and then obviously opening up minnesota on wednesday okay <clears throat> Welcome back to the Green Bay Phoenix Coaches Show presented by Prevea Health, the official health care provider for the Green Bay Phoenix. We're talking with Phoenix men's basketball coach, Will Ryan. Coach, before the break, we were touching a little bit on the roster and uh, the fact that when you came in here, uh, even before you were hired, Amari Davis, the reigning freshman of the year in the Horizon League, had said that he's going to stay. Um, PJ Pipes also stayed, and you touched on a couple other guys, Japana Kellogg and Josh Jefferson, who had to sit out last season. Um, but as far as putting together a roster, especially in these challenging times when you can't go see somebody, you know, talk about that process of filling out the remainder of the roster. Well, when I took over in June, you know, just, just trying to expedite the process and getting to know these guys and, and trying to, in a short amount of time, show them who I am and, and, and how much, you know, I, I care for, for young student athletes and, you know, trying to, you know, become the best teacher, um, role model, whatever the case may be for them. You know, that's easier said than done, but I felt like, you know, I got a chance to build a, a quick relationship with, with the returners. And then the new guys coming in, you know, you touch base with them, you have some Zoom calls and all that. You know, you're just you're just trying to hold down the fort and make sure there's not there's not a mass exodus. So I you know I was impressed getting to know the guys in, in such a small amount of time, and you know they they bought in. You know I don't know if it was something I said or did, but uh, you know they they bought in. They they got here in July, um, and we started our workouts July 20th with them on the court. And so we've just been building ever since. But uh, you know, going forward, trying to recruit kids off of solely video, you know, with it being a dead period until at least April right now, and who knows if it's going to get extended. You know, that's that's really hard. That's that's really difficult, not only on a coaching staff, but for kids and their families. You know, I feel awful for the 2021 and two, even now the 2022 high school class. What kind of challenges are there, excuse me, when you're out recruiting right now, knowing that the NCAA is giving your entire roster another year of eligibility? I mean, are you, do you have a feeling of which guys, you know, that are seniors maybe not coming back or have those discussions even been had yet? Or is that an after the season type thing? You know, some, I've talked to some coaches and they've, you know, some of those, some of those seniors have said, no, nope, I'm not coming back. There's few that have already said they want to come back. Now, had I been here for a few more years, I would probably have a better feel as to what a guy like PJ wants to do or Josh. Um, you know, we haven't crossed that bridge yet. You know, we still have 20 whatever games, you know, hopefully more. Uh, they might, they may love it. They may not. They may not like the system, this, that, or whatever. But, but I think I think they're going to enjoy the season. And you know, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, when the when it's the end of the year, who, whoever knows. You know, who knows when that's going to be. So we'll 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 cross that bridge when we get there. So let's talk about the the guys in the roster, the known entities. PJ Pipes had a great season last year. Led the Horizon League in three point shooting. Um, Amari Davis, as we talked about, freshman of the year. Um, one of the knocks on Amari last year was the fact that he didn't have an outside game. You know, he lived in that mid-range to the basket. Um, with another summer under his belt and working with you, has Amari's range extended at all? Definitely. You know, that, that was something where, you know, if you're going to – if you're creating a scouting report on, on him, you're probably going to try to make him beat you from three. And so – are we telling him to go out there and shoot five, six, seven threes a game? No, but you know he realizes now that he can be a threat, and he's worked tirelessly on an, on expanding his range. And I think I think he's going to be able to surprise some people. 
And that'll set up, you know, his mid range and his ability to slice to the basket, which he's phenomenal at doing. And he gets to spots that most others can't. I don't know if you can even teach that as a coach, but for somebody that's six three and really isn't all that big, he has no problem just taking it to the trees and going right at a seven footer. Yeah. He's uh he's like he's slippery as the kids say. Like, you know, you watch on you see it live and then you see it on film and you're just he he does something new every day where you're he just kind of floats and it's it's amazing how he can do that how quick his feet are. Slippery. I'm going to have to start using that in descriptors of him. Can I write that down and steal? Yep. Feel free. <laughs> Let's talk about the schedule a little bit. Um, we'll get to Minnesota in just a second, but the Horizon League came out. You're going to play 10 opponents. You're going to play them on back-to-back -back days on the same floor, no fans in the stands. Um, you know, talk about some of the pros and cons of doing back-to-back -back games every weekend. Well, growing up where my dad was coaching at Platteville, that's kind of, that's how they, their schedule was. They would play on the road at, um, it was like River Falls. And then on Saturday, they'd go up to Superior. So like, you know, they would play, now it was not the same team, but then there's like D2 leagues who do that as well, where they'll play back-to-back -back nights. Now as a competitor, I hope our guys, you know, if, if we were to take a bump that first game, you, you know, you put it in the rear view and as my sign behind me says next, you, you get to move on to the next day and hopefully, you know, have a quick, have a short memory and get right back at it and try to try to kick their butt on the second day. So, you know, we'll have to get a feel for it as we go along. Uh, you know, it'll be interesting. That's for sure. To try to play that same team back to back days no matter if you win or lose, you know, you could win that first game and guys might think, Oh, we can just go and roll the ball out there and get another one the next day. But it's, it's going to be difficult. And then the season starts tomorrow night against uh, Minnesota. You're going to be playing uh, in the barn. Barn will be an interesting atmosphere without any fans in the stands on Wednesday night. Um, you know, as, as the mid major going into a high major program, do you think it kind of, eases it a little bit without fans there? I mean, I know Minnesota's still a really good program, but you're not going to have all the atmosphere around it. In all honesty, I don't know what to expect just because, you know, new team, this will be our first game. We haven't played against any other competition yet. You know, at this point in time, in most years, you're, you have already had like two closed door scrimmages. Um, had the season started, uh, we would have already had a couple games under our belt. So, you know, you're going into uncharted territory and playing in a, you know, playing in a, in a great venue with, with no fans, the barnyard's not going to be in there. Is it going to be a glorified scrimmage? Probably in, in a sense, but I'm just so, I'm just so excited that our guys get to play against somebody else in a different colored uniform, you know? Yes. And Minnesota, they've, they've got a lot of new faces as well. And, you know, they've got a handful of transfers. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting. You know, I tell our guys just, you know, be prepared for anything. You know, and I, I love, and I know that you guys, neither one of you, because I've had a chance to meet coach Patino a few times. When you see preseason that there's a Ryan and Patino coaching against each other, that's a legendary matchup right there. <laughs> and now, you know, the second generation gets to kick off a season that way. It's got to be kind of cool, though, isn't it? Oh, no question. And honestly, I don't think my dad ever coached against Rick. Okay. I don't think they ever had a head-to-head -head matchup. So, it's something to see, though, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it would, it would have been an epic matchup, that's for sure. Will, I uh, really appreciate the time. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, best of luck tomorrow night as the uh, season kicks off against Minnesota. And, uh, you know, hopefully the team stays healthy through the whole season. That's the goal. That's the head coach of the Phoenix. Will Ryan will return with more on the Green Bay Phoenix Basketball Coaches Show presented by Prevea Health on Learfield IMG College. We're recording now. Welcome back to the Green Bay Phoenix Coaches Show presented by Purveya Health, the official health care provider of the Green Bay Phoenix. Joined now by senior guard PJ Pipes. PJ, thanks for the time tonight, buddy. We appreciate it. I uh, know. Thanks for having me. 
So uh, let, let's start with the summer. It, it's kind of been a crazy summer as far as training wise. You know, everything gets shut down right after the Horizon League tournament in March last year and was kind of up in the air and what you got to do. How did you spend your summer? Uh, for the beginning of the summer, I did a, I did a lot of home workouts. Uh, I actually got a hoop in my driveway, so I was out there a lot. Uh, my dad rebounded for me. And then uh, I have like a little pond kind of around my house. So if I run around that and then into the neighborhood back, it's like a little over two miles. So I usually did that every day or every other day. Uh, and then um, a little bit into the summer, I actually, uh, my AU coach hit me up and told me that I'll be able to get into to the gym that we used to practice in. So then I used to go there with the owner and stuff. And he would let me in. And then uh, once he started to trust me, he actually gave me a key. So I was able nice. to yeah, I was actually able to go in there usually like uh, whenever I wanted and stuff. I just had to let them know. But I really could get in there literally any time of the day, and I just had to let them know. So one of the sports that was cleared is like a safe sport to do is golf. And I know you're a big golfer. Did you get out on the links quite a bit this summer? I only went one time. I'm not going to Really? Lie. At one time. So the day that the uh, links opened up, me and my dad went. And that was the only time I went. Now, I've gotten to meet your dad a couple of times, and he's a, he's a fixture at a lot of the basketball games. He said he was out rebounding for you. He got in the driveway and mixed it up a little bit with you, too, didn't he? Oh, yeah. No, he tried. He tried. He's, uh, he still says that he uh, has his jump shot, but I, I don't know. After this summer, I think he needs to uh, put some more shots up. <laughs> Speaking of putting shots up, you were the leader in the Horizon League last year in three-point shooting. Um, had a, a really good junior campaign, um, especially behind the arc. And in talking with Coach Ryan a little bit, when I was at practice last week, he said they were working on some things with your jump shot. Can you talk about what they might have seen in your shot that might make you even better this year? Uh, I think the biggest thing is that he wants me to stop fading away. I think uh, sometimes I get a little too much, uh, too much confidence in myself. I start fading away or I don't stick with my shot. So they always every it's usually every day that you always yell at me to stay, uh, stay with my shot and stick with it because they say I'll, I will increase my percentage and I'll make more shots. So that's kind of the biggest thing that I try to try to focus on is trying to stick my shot and that uh, hopefully that if I stay sticking my shot that I'll hopefully increase my percentage and hopefully I could get some fouls drawn for uh, people trying to get a contest on me. You're listening to the Green Bay Phoenix Coaches Show. We're talking with senior guard P.J. Pipes. Hard to believe it's four years already, P.J. The senior campaign, I, I got to get this question out of the way because I did talk with Coach Ryan about it. NCAA said, you know, everybody – Basically, this year doesn't count as far as your eligibility goes. You get a free year. Have you thought about what that means as far as possibly playing a fifth year here in Green Bay? Yeah, I actually have. Uh, kind of like when it first announced, I kind of gave it a, a like, kind of like a little quick. I kind of just thought about uh, like stuff I could do with my with my major and stuff, and uh, like kind of what basketball would look out, look for me after like this year, and then. Uh, Kind of like if I wanted to pursue maybe majoring uh, in a different subject or getting another minor or possibly getting a master's. So, so I've kind of all – I kind of gave like all that a thought. But uh, I just kind of like right now I just want to go like day by day because like with COVID, like you really you really don't know what the next day or the next week might like might behold. So I've been kind of trying to stay focused with just trying to go day by day and then like really whatever happens, it, it just happens. Talking with P.J. Pipes and the Green Bay Phoenix basketball team. P.J., everybody knows coaching change happened uh, after last season and into this season. How much of it is an, uh, an adjustment, especially when you were recruited by Coach Darner, played three years in the system, and now having to make a change in your senior year uh, to Coach Ryan, who has a, a, a different style than what you've played here the previous three years? Uh, yeah, it's definitely different. Uh, I know some of the plays we kind of – it's kind of similar it's like kind of like a little similar action I kind of did like a little bit in high school but uh to me I kind of want to try the best of it I feel like now that I might most people think it's like the swing offense or what his dad used to coach that it's more like a slower style and then with me with coach Darner we was always going uh, up and down and to me I kind of feel like I can have the best of both worlds that where if I need to push it uh, I've done it for three years, so I feel like I could do that successfully, especially with, with Amari, who did it for did very well last year, and then some of the other returners who were able to be in that system. And then we could kind of bring that into the new system. And then it's kind of like it's kind of like we have, like, the really, I think, like, the best of both worlds. Like, if we need to push it, we can. But 
when when coach wants us to run a run an offense, we can run a good good uh like a good set and get a good shot at the same time. You were one of the key pieces that decided to stay. I mean, Amari said right away he was going to stay. And then I think everybody's kind of waiting to see what you were going to do. At what point did you say, yep, this is a right fit. I want to stay here. Uh, I was kind of just, uh, I was texting with like some of the, the guys, like the, I mean, they were all freshmen. Uh, and they were like, if they're basically like, if you say we're going to be behind you. And uh, that's where I kind of just felt like I just wanted to take take that role and be like, all right, I'm going to stay for sure. And honestly, I feel like we definitely do good things. And I know a lot of people might write us out because we have a new coach, new system, and a lot of new guys. But I feel like with the pieces that we have, that we can still compete and still be uh, a good and top team right. in the conference. All right, last question for you. It's your you know, senior season. We, we got through talking about whether or not you'll come back next year. But, you know, again, you're, it's a young team this year. You're the old guy. You know, uh, the guy that's been around the program for a little bit. And you can be pretty vocal on the floor. Um, you know, talk about, you know, the leadership role that you're going to need to take with this team this year. Uh, I was always – basically, I kind of just kind of tell them that I was – I was, I will always have their back. And that I know with me being – like, when I was young, I know the ups and downs that you can go through. And uh, not even, like, just the physical toll. I think that a lot of people are starting to see that, like, really the mental toll that – sports can really have with you, especially on social media and uh, people can really say what they want. And I feel like I've been, I've been through a lot of stuff and I've been through a lot of up and, ups and downs since I've been here. So I feel like I could definitely help them with that and definitely keep them, keep their head on the right track. PJ season kicks off tomorrow night in uh, Minnesota, taking on the, uh, the Gophers. Best of luck tomorrow and uh, best of luck throughout the entire season. Let's hope we make it through the whole thing, right? Let's hope so. Thank you very much. That's P.J. Pipes, guard with the Green Bay Phoenix. When the Phoenix Coaches Show returns, Matt Pauley takes the reins, and we'll focus on Green Bay Phoenix women's basketball. You're listening to Green Bay Phoenix Basketball from Learfield IMG College.